When you're making orthographic drawings from a three-dimensional part, it requires a little bit of visualization. So to help out with that, I have a simple L bracket with three holes in it, and we need to define a front face. And so in this class, what we'll say is the longest dimension is aligned horizontally for the front face. That's located on the lower left-hand side of your sketches. Then here's the visualization part. You have to rotate the part over here like this to the right to see the right. Since you don't have these parts in your hand, it requires some degree of imagination to get from this side to that side right there. And then to look at the top, you rotate it up like this. A lot of people would say that this is an equivalent top view, or this is an equivalent top view, or maybe even that one would be an equivalent top view. But not for an orthographic projection. You really have to take the part and tilt it up just like this. So the top part would have visible lines around the outside edge and also a visible line right here because you have a different face right here. You also have pairs of hidden lines to represent the holes that go through there. And for the front facing view, you have the visible lines around the outside, pairs of hidden lines for the holes, and for the right hand side you'd have visible lines around the outside, a visible line right here, and pairs of hidden lines here and visible holes there. All right, locate exercise number nine, and what you'll see at the top is an explanation about what to do, but notice that this right here is what is called single stroke gothic lettering. So that's what we're gonna do first, is go down here to the bottom and just fill in all this information, make sure it's in all capital letters. It's kinda of like going back to first grade again because you're writing in all capital letters, but this is what a machine shop person is going to expect, is to have everything neat and organized, all the same characters, and of course later on what you'll be able to do is use AutoCAD to do the lettering for you, but for this exercise, um, let's just go ahead and fill all this in. There's also some inf information down here that I want to give you. Uh, this is going to be, this exercise is going to be due today, and also we're going to use a scale on these drawing, um, on these drawings of two, and then put a colon right there, and one a two to one ratio and you'll see what that means in a moment and put your team number up here as well alright so just be slow and deliberate when you're doing your lettering there make sure it's in all capital letters alright let's go back up here to uh, sketch A and what you're gonna do is uh, call this the longest dimension right here so this is the front facing view so you might even put an arrow right here to help you remember for each of these drawings that the, this is what we're going to be calling the front on our drawings. Also coming over here you can imagine an arrow coming in that direction this is going to be the right side and that makes this uh, view from up here the top. That's just for reference when you're making these drawings. Now what you can do is uh, to measure this you can kind of make some marks here where those dots are and then count the number of spaces. So count the number of divisions. Not the number of lines, but the number of divisions. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What that means is that I want to use a two to one ratio and so I need to go 14 units along this axis. So go ahead and do that. Okay, you'll need some kind of straight edge to make these sketches. So what I recommend is just grabbing a student ID or a credit card or something like that that you can use to make these uh, edges. So if you don't have a ruler, it's not a big deal. You can just use that. So back to this drawing here. There were seven um, spaces along this dimension, which means we're going to go 14 along this axis. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. And so use our straight edge to make the, uh, the line like that. Okay, and then what you'll notice is that since we're looking at this front face, that uh, it's two units high, which means we're going to come over here and make it four units high since it's a two to one ratio. You will do that on both sides and then there's a one unit cut in on each side which means we go two dots in. Now if you're going out on your own and trying to make your own views of this and and you're not getting this these um, these drawings exactly as we have them here, then erase what you have and come and do this because it needs to be exactly like this. You have to define the front face, right face, and top face exactly like we're doing here because that's what the answer key is going to have on it and uh, your instructors are going to sign off on these. So make sure that you get it right. So two dimensions uh, 
high on the three-dimensional drawing over here beyond that small platform that's going to make it uh, rise up four units. Be slow and deliberate on these lines. Probably use a straight edge. It's a little difficult to do on the video. So I'm kind of freehanding it. Okay, and um, your instructor can actually pause the video at any time uh, if you need me to uh, slow down on this. So if, if you would like for your instructor to pause the video, just uh, raise your hand and uh, we'll pause the video. There's going to be a through hole all the way through here, so an extra dimension, an extra unit in over here corresponds to an extra two units in over here. Make sure that hidden lines actually start on a visible line and end on a visible line. And make sure the dashes are all the same length. So starting on a visible line, terminating on a visible line. So not just kind of dash, 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 but careful and deliberate motions when you do that. You can use what are called construction lines to figure out what the top view is going to look like. Construction lines are lightly uh, shaded lines. You can just freehand those in. and It'll help you find the dimensions more easily than having to make a measurement again. Construction lines are those that can be erased also. So using a straight edge, come in here. And so there is uh, going to be the top view. So we're sketching that part of it here. Now we need to figure out how deep this part is. Making vertical lines right here allows us to count the number of divisions that we have for the depth. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six deep, so we want to go 12 since it's a two to one ratio. That puts us two units from the top face from the top wall. Like so. So make sure your drawing is exactly like this. We have a transparency overlay. I think. I'm going to lay over the top of this to check your work on each of these. Alright, so we need to have some kind of, um, well we can erase the uh, construction line right here. And we need to have some kind of, um, we need a visible line to represent this platform. Same is true for the left hand side like that. Then we have to represent the through hole from the top view. Notice it goes one dimension in on each side, which means it's going to go two dimensions in on the two to one ratio. All right, then, you know, like I was saying earlier on uh, using the L bracket, you take and look at the front part, then you turn it up and look at the top. You turn it back and then turn it over to the right, like that. So that's the motion you want to imagine in your head. Also use the view over there. You also can uh, use construction lines. So lightly drawn lines over here tells us that the height of this is like that. We can look at the depth again. Um, Twelve deep, and what you're going to see from the back side is this platform. So we can have a visible line going all the way across here. Now, if you've already seen something like this in high school or in another class or something like that, go ahead and proceed on to B, C, and D. But if you haven't seen this before, you can have your instructor pause the video or replay the video after this is over. Using light construction lines over here, you can see that what it's going to look like is this all the way over here, like so. 
What else is needed? What else am I missing? Well, I have to show the through hole again. And uh, from the right side, need, we, you have one unit in on each side, which corresponds to two down. Make sure that your hidden lines terminate on the visible line. Slow and deliberate. All right, and I think we have completed that.